Hey there, I'm Kevin Menden Hall, and today we're going to talk about work plane grids and reference planes. I personally use a two foot grid when I draw, and the reason for that being is that uh, our trusses land on two foot centers, and I don't like to have wasted trusses. To me, in my opinion, there's no, no reason to have a truss six inches away from another one. So I always try to avoid that. The other thing is that all our building materials are divisible by two feet. Even uh, concrete block, even though the block itself uh, is generally eight by eight by 16, they also make eight by eight by eights. So that um, obviously 16 inches and eight inches equals two feet. Typically with a building that I design on uh, on a two foot grid, a concrete mason could go all the way around that building and not have to cut almost any block whatsoever. I'd like to remind you to like and subscribe and let's jump in Revit and we'll start working on our work plane grids. Alright, so here we are in Revit. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit VV, as in Victor, Victor, on my keyboard. It's going to bring up visibility graphics and to highlight one of the categories here I'm just gonna hit S that's gonna take us to our S's I'm gonna expand site and I'm gonna turn on the internal origin project base point and the survey point and that's gonna show us where our origin of our drawing is the green and red arrows that you see here are your internal origin and you can't move those those are fixed uh, these your project base point survey point you can move actually but we don't want to move those right now i'm going to hit Control z to put those back where they are they will snap to your uh, internal origin the reason for that being is i'm going to use these to snap i always put a uh, i myself personally uh, put a reference plane like that and another one and these give me something that I can snap to because our grid when I turn it on here in a minute you'll see that you can actually move the grid around so I'm going to select this and I'm going to pin up here or PN on your keyboard I do that with both of those so they're both pinned I'm going to go to the architecture tab and all the way over to the right I'm going to click show it's going to show our work plane so now if you select that and you look over in your properties palette you can see the the grid plane or the work plane grid spacing and by default Revit has this set at two foot six so each one of these squares is two foot six inches as I mentioned earlier I always do a two foot grid and unfortunately you can't pin your grid and sometimes when you first set this up it may be off a little bit from your point of origin or your internal origin and this is where these reference planes will come into play I'm gonna hit AL on the keyboard I'm gonna select the uh, reference plane and then the grid then I'm gonna do the same thing here as I said I wish there was a way to lock this but uh, I have not found that if there is a way but this is the reason why I put these reference planes here because I have them locked so now on every level or every view I'll have those two reference planes these work planes or work plane grids are level specific so you can see uh, we can see our grid here if I turn on our levels go to annotation hit L levels turn those on so in our 3d view you can see that there's actually multiple work plane grids multiple work planes if we uh, if we select this it will show our grid spacing this one is uh, is one foot if we go back to our architecture tab and set and this is where you can go through each level and see each uh, each one of your work plane grids. I personally am not a fan of having a bunch of different work planes and different work plane grids. I would prefer to have just one, just like we did in AutoCAD that was uh, based off your internal origin, but for some reason Revit set up multiple 
work plane grid. So the reason why I tell you this is that in each one of your levels, you're going to have to reset your uh, your grid, your grid spacing, and that is the reason for these reference planes. So as you go from level to level, uh, say we move to our roof plan, for instance, and select that, and these can be off from view to view. Um, so your uh, so your floor plan level may be lined up on these um, on these reference planes, but when you switch to another view, they may not necessarily be lined up. So that's why I use these reference planes. And if for some reason you're not seeing your reference planes, again hit VV on your keyboard, Victor Victor annotation, hit R. That'll take you down to your reference planes and reference lines um, and just make sure those are turned on. Alright, so I have a little 2D diagram that I drew up here. Real easy to uh, demonstrate why two foot centers makes so much sense to me. So here's our CMUs, which are 8816s. Then we have the little half block here in the middle. You can see by the end of the run and if you look at the at the grid, our grid is on uh, two foot centers as well. There is no cut block. In the same scenario over here where we have a 15 foot wall, there's a, a block here that needs to be cut and another block on the bottom, of course. Moving up to our wall, this is uh, our shear panel, our four foot by eight foot shear in this case. And you can see four shear panels or four sheets of OSB cover that entire wall. Nothing needs to be cut. If something did need to be cut and following our rule of uh, a two foot grid, it would be a two foot cut. And this piece could then be used on the next wall. It would have to be ripped to 16 inches because our studs are typically on 16 inch centers. But then you're only talking eight inches of scrap, which could almost definitely be used elsewhere on the job. Over here on the other hand, where we have our 15 foot wall, we have three sheets of shear panel. And then one that's, one that's ripped, we obviously have to take a foot off of this. And granted, if you have a wood, um, and granted, if you have a foot of scrap, that's not that big of a deal. As in our case where we had eight inches of scrap on the other wall. But if you're doing this throughout the job and you have a whole bunch of one foot pieces of OSB laying around, it's going to be harder to burn all that up. So moving up, these are our top plates. These in particular are 16 feet. And you can see that uh, that reaches our entire span. Of course, there are some variables to this. Generally, uh, your top plate is lapped. Parts of these get cut out, but it's very minimal. Uh, typically, this the second top plate, you would have five and a half inches cut out of that plate. Although, in the case where, uh, in certain circumstances, you might have this, uh, you might have a circumstance like this, where you can just take this plate, move it over your five and a half, that gives you your, your lap, and then it laps over here. So then in a circumstance like that, that works out very nicely. Over here at our 15 foot wall, we've had to cut a foot off of each one of those plates. There's not a whole lot you can do with a foot of plate. You might be able to burn it up with some blocking or, or something to that effect, but you're still taking a foot off of each one of those plates. Um, and of course the, the plates come in 16 foot lengths, 20 foot lengths. So if, if these were 20 foot lengths, you would have a four foot cutoff. You can use that somewhere else. So moving up again, so we have our trusses, and as I mentioned earlier, our trusses are in two-foot center. So on our 16-foot wall, you can see we don't have a wasted truss anywhere in here. And if we come over here to our 15-foot wall, you can see we have a truss here, and we have another one just a foot away. So in my opinion, this, this is a waste. Trusses aren't cheap, obviously. Um, now moving up to the roof sheathing. Now you can see our sheathing here. These are uh, four by eight sheets. And if I copy these, obviously um, that's gonna fit like it should. And then typically your next row, you're gonna stagger your joints four feet <clears throat> and then start your next row. So then you, uh, again, you don't have any waste to speak of. 
There's less cutting because there's either full sheets or half sheets. Here on the other hand, if we have the same situation, we would have a full sheet here, and then we would have another sheet here that we would have to rip a foot off of the end of it. And there we end up with another one foot piece of OSB to try to find a place for that, a home for that. And then that compounds when we get to our next, which what would be the half sheet that ends up being a three foot piece of OSB, you still have a one foot cutoff there. These rules even apply to where you're doing a poured foundation or something to that effect. Your forming material is all dimensional material. So it, it all comes into play when we draw on uh, in two foot increments. And the last thing is these lines repre represent our studs. And you can see that uh, obviously they fall nicely. We don't have a waist stud. We can pull shear from either direction because our stud layout falls the same in any direction. It doesn't matter uh, what side you come from in this circumstance. And I'm going to get rid of these. And there are some guys that do two foot centers on their exteriors and they stack their trusses over the top of their studs. So that would be this circumstance where we have our studs on two foot centers. It's not very common, but some guys do this. So you can see that again, our stud layout is the same coming from both directions. Doesn't matter what direction we lay out from, a stud lands underneath a truss in every uh, circumstance. And here on the other hand, obviously, uh, we would have a stud here. You would have a ripped piece of plywood for your shear panel. So just by nudging something like, like this by a foot, you save all that hassle. And some people may ask, what about trying to stay within a certain square footage or a certain building envelope? And I can tell you by experience that I don't have an issue with that. I can always make it work. At least I haven't had an issue as of yet. I've had a couple of um, customers lately who asked me to stay, one was at 2,500 square feet, the other one was 3,000 square feet, uh, one I hit at 2,504, the other one I hit at 3,012, I think. And both of those projects I kept on a two foot grid throughout. And there are times, there are times where it's almost impossible to, you may have to fudge a wall in one way or another. But I try to I try to fudge it in the direction that isn't going to cause a truss to be sitting out there off center or under two foot under a two foot span. So these are a couple of the jobs that I did that I told you about earlier. This is a 2,504 square foot. So I explained at the end of the last segment that sometimes I would move walls off of the two foot grid, but in the in the case where it's not going to cause a wasted truss, and that's what happened in this case. You can see we have a walk-in shower here. And so to make the, the bedroom a decent size and the walk-in shower a decent size, we move this wall off of that two foot center or that two foot grid. But as you can see here on our plan, we don't have a wasted truss. It just changes the span of the truss. And unfortunately, it uh, if this were gonna be a block foundation, then they would have to cut the block on that corner. But that isn't a huge, huge deal. And then the other plan here, this is the 3,000 square foot plan that I told you about. And you can see that uh, my walls on this particular plan are all on the grid, all the way around the building. I have not dimensioned this one yet, but um, so far everything is working out well on this one. So we'll go back to our project here. And normally what I would do is, uh, this is our point of origin or internal origin. And the reason why I always make sure to, to put my front left corner somewhere around this area. The biggest reason for this being is that this gives us a point of bearing. We, we kind of know where we are in the drawing. And I, you can see over here on the right hand side of the, uh, in our project browser that I have all these sheets that are already set up. So as I draw my model, it's going to start to show up in this area here. And the reason being is that I draw relatively in the same place all the time. If I were to draw, start my house, say way over here. So then if I drew my house from this point over to this direction, you can see it would be off the page. So that's mainly the reason why, um, why I use this as a reference point and try to start and work up and away from that. So using the grid, 
is uh, very straightforward. I'm going to hit WA on my keyboard to start a wall, and I will leave it with that wall type. And so I I keep my location line for my wall at the uh, core face exterior. And what that means is that if we go into our wall properties, so here's our core boundary, and you can see up here that it says exterior side. So that's the point that our wall is going to draw. So if we do this and that, and you can see, you can see that it's very easy to snap to the uh, intersections of these uh, of the grid. So now, when I go to dimension this, DI on the keyboard, and I just hit those points, and there we are. We're at a two foot center. I keep my material to the outside, and I turn these thick lines off. So I have my OSB or my shear panel, my foam and then my stucco. If I select this wall and I change the wall type, I go to um, siding and you can see it just adjusts from the outside. The core stays exactly where it is. We don't dimension to material. We want to know where the framing is so that's why we do this. And there are a lot of other advantages to, uh, to our foot, two foot centers. If I move it in two foot increments, I know if I if I want to just move this wall, I can just go two foot and it will uh, it will move exactly two feet when I get to the roof and I have to edit the roof as well. Sometimes I know that when I edit, I need to just move in two foot increments and that it makes things uh, much easier. My second preference is to move in one foot increments and the same thing. I can look at my drawing. I can tell whether it's two feet or one foot and that way I don't have to uh, I don't have to guess I don't have to pull dimensions I don't have to do anything I can just grab it and move it two feet and it goes your editing goes a lot quicker that way too and as mentioned earlier if you're ever in a at a point where you have something that is off your grid you can always hit AL select the object that you want to move to first and then the object that you want to move second you can see the align tool wants to grab the center of the core you just hit tab on your keyboard that'll bring you to the outside of the core you hit that and it'll move it right to where it needs to be that's it for this one uh thanks again for watching and uh just like to remind you one more time to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time